Good to go? Good to go. All Good right. to go. Um, so how about we start a little bit with your background, your okay. name, uh, where you were born, a little okay. bit about your family. Okay. Um, my name is Paul Murphy. I was born here in Buffalo. And uh, a little bit about my family. We started this business uh, in 1943. Okay. It was started by my grandfather, Paul Gracia. And it was originally a wallpaper and paint business. And our original location was at 250 Grant Street, which is where uh, Gershio's is right now. Oh, okay. 1958, uh, we built this building and we've been here ever since. Um, we evolved from a wallpaper paint business into a floor covering business purely for economic reasons. Um, this business seems to be much more service oriented than the paint business was. And I think the only way a, a small business can compete with a large big box is by offering outstanding customer service. Um, I don't know what else you want to know. Uh, do you own this building? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, oh, okay. I own this building and I own the building uh, at 210 Grant Street, which is directly next door. And uh, again, that was purchased uh, in 1958. This was actually a used car lot before we put the building up. And do you have any siblings who help you with the business? Uh, no, actually, I, uh, I have a brother that passed away several years ago, but he was uh, actually a photographer. Oh, wow. Uh, he worked for uh, Disney for quite a while in Disney Orlando. Where? In Orlando. Mm -hmm. And then um, he left them and started working for a convention photographer and freelancing. Um, this, there was just the two of us, and uh, he decided he didn't want any part of this business. <laughs> so, um, and that's it. Um, I think, you know, we've, we've been in business for 70-something years, and Grant Street has changed immensely over those years. Um, primarily, when I was younger, uh, late 50s, um, this was a predominantly Italian neighborhood. Um, it was way different. Um, I think that the, the neighborhood wasn't as automobile oriented as, as modern times. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is that everyone in the neighborhood was pretty gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the time, uh, Bethlehem Steel was going, Republic Steel, uh, there was a big Western electric plant, uh, on the Tonawanda Buffalo border, and of course the Chevy plant, which is still there, and the Ford plant, which is still there. Uh, at one time, we were open two nights a week until nine o'clock at night, and the street was bustling. Mm -hmm. um, over the, you know, beginning probably in the mid to late 60s, you could see a, a decline in the neighborhood. And I think probably five or six years ago, kind of bottomed out. Mm -hmm. And it's coming back slowly but surely. Um, you know, as I tell people, it took 30 or 35 years to, for the neighborhood to get the way it was. And it's not going to, you know, turn around in two or three years. But I could definitely see a difference in the, you know, the, the way the neighborhood's improving. And I'm very happy to see it. Uh, what were the reasons you thought when, you know, the shift in this change, like from... Well, the... um... You know, I think that as people became more accustomed to, you know, having a car or two, um, they wanted a place that they could, you know, park their car and they wanted a little bit more land. Mm -hmm. And uh, the suburbs seemed appealing. Mm -hmm. And people moved out for that reason. And many of those people that moved out still shop here. Um, you know, not only with me, but some of the other stores, Gershio's, mm -hmm. The Meeting Place, um, they come back to the old neighborhood for their staples. Yeah. And um, and how is your, has your clientele shifted at all because um, of that? Well, we have, you know, the, the people that have been with us over the years, people that, you know, their grandparents did business with my grandparents, mm -hmm. and they're still coming in. But we also do a big business with people that both live in the neighborhood 
and people that own property in the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, I think our, our client base has shifted a little bit um, only because we're not in the paint business anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that, you know, mm -hmm. we draw from all over the, all over the area, uh, mostly from around here, but we do work everywhere in the, in the county. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think? You mentioned that now the neighborhood's moving back uh, to a different phase, right? Right. So how is that happening and what is that different phase? Well, there's more immigrants moving in. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very diverse neighborhood. We are, I'm going to get quoting a, a study that may or may not be true, but um, the most, most, most ethnically diverse neighborhood in the state other than, you know, some of the neighborhoods in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great because, you know, there's just so much culture that, that the new people coming to this country bring, mm -hmm. and uh, I like it. Um, mm -hmm. The, you know, the big difference, I think, is that um, back in the day that people were gainfully employed and that's not the case right now, mm -hmm. but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear what you said because I was just thinking about, uh, you know, what happened in Paris this weekend and then um, there are about 28 governors in the United States that have basically said that we don't want to accept any more Syrian refugees yeah. right. anymore. And I know there's like about some Syrian refugees yeah. who've come and settled in Buffalo. Yeah. What do you think of well, that? Well, you know, I, you know, my great grandfather, whose name was Marfino, mm -hmm. he had to change his name to Murphy in order to get a job. So, you know, everybody's gone through it and people should remember that. Mm -hmm. What did your grandfather go through? Like, I mean, can you tell well, us a little bit about a, him? He was, <laughs> he was in, he got a job or he applied for a job at City Hall uh -huh. as an interpreter because he could speak Italian uh -huh. and his name was Murfino and they didn't hire him. He yeah. reapplied, changed his name to Murphy and they hired him. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, you know, people are, are down about, you know, having immigrants and mm -hmm. refugees come to this country, but, you know, unless uh, you're a Native American, your people went through that too. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So you're of Italian background. Oh, yeah. And, you know, to anyone who knew your name, immediately think Irish. Well, you know, I can use it to my advantage sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, was your grandfather an immigrant here or? Um, my paternal, uh, my maternal grandfather, uh -huh. the one that started this business, uh -huh. was born in Sicily. Uh -huh. um, my paternal grandfather was actually born in St. Catharines, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And uh, your mother, did she, uh, she's? Uh, my mother was um, involved with the business up until about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And she's no longer with us. So. Um, do you have kids? Well, my wife and I have two from her previous marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is a chef mm -hmm. and one is working uh, in an administrative position. Mm -hmm. and I don't think either one of them wants to be in the carpet business. <laughs> <laughs> then what do you think then, what is the future of this business? I'm not sure. Um, okay. We'll see what happens. And if I could sell it, I'll sell it. If not, I'll close it. And hopefully one of the you know, advantages of the neighborhood coming back is that I'll be able to rent the, the space to somebody. Mm -hmm. I think any of the stores on this street is that you'll get a fair price but you'll get customer service that you'll never get in a big place. Anywhere else, yeah. And that's what I think differentiates the neighborhood business, whether it be here mm -hmm. or whether it be Elmwood or, or any mm -hmm. of the local neighborhoods, that's what differentiates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if you notice a guy walk by, I wave to him. <laughs> and um, there's, you know, people walk in the door yeah. and probably 75 to 80% of the people that walk in the door, I'll know their name. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. do that at Home Depot. Yeah. So. I doubt that. Yeah, right. <laughs>
So you mentioned that, uh, you know, this this neighborhood is extremely diverse and there's like different cultures bringing different things. What are some of the things that you really like about the neighborhood? Like what, like what is your favorite restaurant or a store that you go to? Well, there's a lot of great stores that have popped up in the last several years. Mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned restaurants. Uh, the West Side Bazaar, which has basically seven or eight restaurants in one location is nice. Um, I bring people there, mm -hmm. you know, for lunch all the time and they're amazed mm -hmm. at what a, a great place it is. Um, but the other places, notably uh, Global Villages, and Louise does a great job. She brings in stuff from all over the world and people tell me that it's substantially less expensive than buying them in, mm -hmm. you know, um, a department store or even over in Elmwood. Mm -hmm. um, Gershio's, of course, has been a staple for mm -hmm. years, um, and that brings a lot of people. But the other thing is that there's so many ethnic food markets now. Um, my daughter is a chef, mm -hmm. and we walked from here down to the bazaar and had lunch and walked back, and she counted six places you could buy quail eggs. And, you know, <laughs> kind of amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, I think, what I like about it. And one of the things that can make a neighborhood turn around more quickly, um, if ethnic restaurants open up, because people will come down mm -hmm. to try them, and that's the best security there is, is people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, something that I don't know much about, but from what I've heard also is like, you know, with this kind of a turnaround, there's also a shift now happening in who stays on the west side, as in like it's also like uh, also pushing out, let's say, immigrants, more like gentrification. Um, how do you see that in some ways? Well, don't get me going on gentrification. <laughs> um, you know, I understand the, some people's point of view on that, but if you have somebody that's willing to come into a bad neighborhood live in there, make a substantial financial investment, why are you down on them? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, would you rather have it the way it was? Mm -hmm. You know, falling apart, absentee landlords, absentee slumlords? And I'll take gentrification over that any day of the week. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I feel about it. And uh, do you think the uh, the way the police functions in this neighborhood has changed also in terms of that, or how does it function and how has it? Yeah, I think it's changed a lot. Okay. Um, you know, back when I was in my rambunctious, youthful days, um, you know, if you gave a cop a hard time, you got to whack across the back of the legs with a billy club. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You didn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And you didn't get hurt, you know, right here, and you stopped. <laughs> um, I think that people had a little more respect for the police then. And it's like everything else in the world. You know, it's the 1%. 99% mm -hmm. of the cops are decent. Mm -hmm. And it's the 1% that make the headlines, like mm -hmm. everything else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the most part, they do their job, and they do their job really well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, you walk in that building in the dark with your gun drawn, and, oh, I shot the guy by, you know, you wouldn't even walk in the building. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's another way things have changed. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, uh, in terms of, uh, do you have something else to? No. Oh, okay. Now, the reason why I was thinking about uh, the cops is also because, uh, amongst other things, you know, Buffalo is extremely diverse, but it's also very segregated in the ways uh, how, you know, people live, where they live, and uh, the way cops behave changed based on that. And that's one of the reasons why I was... Yeah, I mean, I, the only, you know, one of the things that I think should be mandatory now is that the police officers should live in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not required now, and I think it should be. 
they all come up. Do you, is, do you think the reason is because they live in the suburbs and then they come down to the city for the job? Or Well, that's yeah, that's what they do. I mean, if you lived in the city, it would just, you would have a whole different outlook. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you can't leave it, you can't leave it behind. Mm -hmm. It's your home mm -hmm. rather than your job. Yeah. We did a job for a Buffalo police officer and he, his house was, 45 minutes from this store. Mm -hmm. wow. So, I mean, you know, how, yeah. how connected to your neighborhood can you be? Yeah. <clears throat> now, um, you know, I grew up in this neighborhood and, uh, you know, maybe I've become immune to it, but I think, you know, people that are not from the neighborhood get a little paranoid, but I, I don't feel threatened here at all. Mm -hmm. Where do you live? Well, if you walk directly east mm -hmm. for five blocks and you get to Richmond, mm -hmm. you'll walk into my house. <laughs> <laughs> do you own your house? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, um, yeah, my wife and I both grew up in North Buffalo and uh, West Side, Elmwood Village y thing. And when we looked for a house, we were looking either up um, around McKinley High School, which is where we grew up, or mm -hmm. around where we are now. Mm -hmm. uh, and those were the only two places we even considered. Mm -hmm. so. and yeah, we like it. Do you just walk home? No, I would, but I have to bring the van for, you know, for deliveries and stuff. Oh, but, okay. And you know, there's days like in the winter mm -hmm. if the streets are a mess. It's impossible. <laughs> and I know we're not doing deliveries. I'll walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife is a Buffalo school teacher, and she teaches at the old Seneca High School, so it's you know, a ten minute commute for her. So oh, okay. Her family ran a a bowling alley for years where the Taps Market on Grant and Amherst is. Mm. They owned it. It was a bowling alley called Rockmar. Mm -hmm. And uh, they ran it for 30 years, maybe longer. Can I plug a couple of things sure. that we yeah. that our yes. business association is doing? Yes. Okay. Um, there's uh, our business association, one of the business associations in the neighborhood is called the Grant Ferry Association. And it's been kind of a little bit dormant the last several years. We're revising it a little bit. and. Um, we have a couple of events coming up. One is called uh, Peace, Love, and Grant Street, which will be on December 3rd. We'd also like to invite everybody to become active in the Grant Ferry Association. Um, the other big event that we have will be held in June, and that's called the Taste of Diversity. And it's a food and art festival similar to Taste of Buffalo, but I think we're way more diverse. And that's it. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah.